Good morning, everybody. It's my pleasure to welcome you all at a new episode of um, Web's webinar Wednesday. Uh, today we'll talk about going online and going remote in these challenging times of COVID-19 together with Steve from, from HubSpot. Um, my name is Thijs. Um, I'm your host for today. Uh, I'm representing Web's. I'm a new business representative at Web's and um, we are a, a lead partner of HubSpot. Um, I'm also challenged by working from home these days, but still performing and still working our pipeline. That's where we can help people with uh, businesses with nowadays. So, um, yeah, we're still taking the chances by having the right process, the right people and the right tools. Um, before we uh, head over to Steve, I have some rules to make this very uh, uh, doable for this morning. Uh, you're all muted, so we can't hear you. That will stay the whole uh, uh, webinar. Uh, please put your cameras on, make yourself known in the chat pane by saying hi if, or good morning if you didn't do it already uh, and say where you're from. So I say hi to you all guys from Den Bosch, uh, all the way in the south of the Netherlands. Um, saying the chat pane is your biggest friend in this webinar. Uh, Steve made some uh, uh, parts in his presentation available for questions. So please feel free to ask your questions in the chat pane. I will collect them for you. And once Steve goes to a questionnaire uh, Q&A part in his presentation, I will make sure to cover uh, more of the questions. Uh, if some questions are unanswered in this webinar, you will get a direct link to my calendar or to Steve's calendar in order to ask those questions in person. Um, one last thing from my end, and then we start. Um, I want to introduce Steve. He is amazing on working on remote. In between homeschooling and lunch, he is still helping people, advising people on remote and closing deals from HubSpot. So uh, I'm very pleased to introduce to you all, Steve Fon. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Welcome from Dublin. I am going to take my lovely Webs hat off that they uh, kindly gave me. Uh, it's lovely to be with you all. I've just asked my kids uh, who are homeschooling with my wife to not use our iPad. So I have enough Internet. So they're now using books. And uh, we're, we're, I'm looking forward to this morning. So I work for HubSpot. I've worked for HubSpot for over six years. I'm based in Dublin in Ireland, and I'm delighted to, to be with you all. These are, are, are tricky uh, and unprecedented times. And so we're going to be thinking about how to respond to COVID-19 as uh, people and as businesses. Uh, so going online and remote. I was one of the fortunate people uh, that actually was working mainly remote anyway. Uh, the way I've been working with HubSpot for many years now is to do most of my work from home. So uh, I've had a lot of experience of, of selling and managing clients and working with my partners, people like uh, Webs, on how to work remotely. So hopefully there's some things I can, I can share. Please do ask questions in the chat, as Ty said, and then we'll have moments in the, in the presentation to, uh, to go through this. Um, so these are strange, unprecedented times. Uh, what do we do? Well, the first thing is we are reminded of our humanity and what's important. And before we go into thinking about business things, I think that's important for us all, that there is something happening here that is good for us as we think about our humanity and our, our, our sense of togetherness and what's important in life. And so uh, it's important, isn't it, that we step, stop and think uh, and, and learn some lessons here as individuals. How do we respond then? Well, every one of us, and I think the world is doing this, we need to respond with sympathy and compassion. Uh, and uh, hopefully that is what you're doing internally and what you're receiving from your customers and vendors. Um, and, and therefore we must respond with a sense of collaboration. We're in this together. We need to work together. We need to help each other. Uh, we need to uh, make sure we're sensitive to each other's needs and doing all we can uh, to be flexible. Um, now we want to help our customers, uh, HubSpot. We we've all, that's always been our, our that's in that's inbound. We're here to help. We're here to support. So that's always been our the way we've we, we've we've seen selling and we've seen engaging. How can we help? Uh, we don't always get it right, but that's what we're trying to do. Um, 
And so how are we helping our customers? Well, we want to help everyone go online and remote. And I'm going to share how we're trying to do that and some offers we have at the moment. Um, but uh, I guess that the message from today and the key, the key message I want to give for today's webinar is that we must all adapt. Every one of us is having to adapt. Uh, and so how can we adapt well and how can, how can we use this opportunity? So what about HubSpot's adaption? No one is an expert right now. No one has got it all figured out. No one has responded to this in our generation or the previous generation. So we're all having to just adapt in the moment. And the speed of adaption is, is going to be critical here and doing it sensibly without panic and fear. Um, so how are we adapting? I have been so impressed with the leadership of HubSpot of how quickly they have adapted. Uh, and I just want to talk through some internal changes, not because HubSpot's got everything right, but just to show you how impressed I've been with our leadership and how that's affected me. So how have we adapted internally? Well, for example, we have changed uh, the reps plans. We've offered more flexibility for reps. We've changed the way holidays are working. There's just been a load of focus on how do we make sure our employees, uh, people like myself, are helped. And that's been really well appreciated. And so they've made some quick changes just to take off some of that immediate pressure. There's been help for parents. My kids can join a HubSpot. Uh, they've got some, some professional coming in online and you can have songs and activities for naught to fours and fours to eights. Just ways of going, well, everyone's at home now. How can we help the parents? And the help for the parents, I'm a parent of two ch children, uh, has been extraordinarily good. Um, how else are we helping? We now have mental health seminars and different types of seminars running regularly in HubSpot where we're getting guest speakers and, and, and experts to come in so that people who are struggling personally in this season can have a moment to be helped. Uh, so that's been really well received. Uh, I would say the biggest thing is there's been a lot of clear communication. Uh, from my CEO and from others, uh, Halligan, Brian Halligan, uh, lots of communication and not trying to, you know, trying to just keep everyone in the loop. And I'm going to show you an example of that in a moment, the kind of communication that's been really helpful uh, externally and internally. So there's some of the changes. Uh, and there's lots of checking in on people, checking team morale, giving assurances to people where, where possible. Um, so just some HubSpot internal adaptions. And I hope uh, you're doing similar things. Uh, there's been extra resources and training put on. So I'm going to show you a dashboard of the industries that are actually doing okay during the season that maybe maybe it's, it's help, we, we can helpfully reach out to at this time uh, and ones that aren't uh, maybe having a, a tougher time and how we can help them. So we've even created dashboards around the type of industries that might be responding and having a, an easier or harder time. Uh, and I'll show you an example of that. So lots of changes, but really helpful, good communication, supporting you as a person, supporting you as a professional. Um, so the question is, what can you be doing? They're just what we're doing. We haven't got it all right. Everyone's adapting. Uh, what can you be doing as a business for, for the person and for the professional? And um, we must obviously uh, do both. So what about HubSpot's adaption externally? If that's what we're doing internally, what about externally? How are we helping our customers? Uh, what are we doing to ensure that our partners and our, and our customers are well looked after? Well, a number of things. We're helping with some contract changes. And this is uh, the details of this I'm going to share with you afterwards. Uh, but we, want, we, we appreciate, for example, cash flow is a big challenge for many businesses right now. Um, so, uh, so, so here's, here's an example. So we're doing some six-month contracts. In March, that was, within certain MRR bands, just to give people that shorter option. Uh, we're doing some discounting options for the higher tier deals that we have. Uh, we're making sure we're being creative for those slightly bigger deals for the 90 day period we're in. We're doing some net 90 day payment terms again, just to help with cash flow. Uh, it's not going to be forever. It's just an immediate response to help with some of the challenges. Uh, we're doing some paid pilots where you can sign up for three months. Again, the, there's certain rules and criteria, and I'm happy to engage with you and Tyson afterwards about the details. The point is, we're trying to give people options in the immediate. Uh, which might help with cash flow in short term. We paid our partners commissions in advance. So Webs is a great partner of ours. We made sure we're giving them that help with cash flow at this time. We're able to do that. And it's our privilege to do that. What about software? What are we doing with our software to help uh, uh, our, our prospects and our, and our, and our customers? Well, we, our free software now includes enormous amounts of stuff that was in our professional or, or starter packages. Things like our meetings tool, our quotes and e-sign, our one-to-one video. We know that sales reps 
and, and marketeers need tools to work remotely. So we're going, let's give that away for free for this season, not forever, but for this season. Uh, we're removing email and calling limits. And again, there's different criteria and tiers there, but we're just saying that we know people are going to be emailing more. We know people are going to be calling and using our calling feature. So we're going to ensure that they are, uh, that, that, that they are helped there. We're pausing pricing increase. We had a whole launch of our, of our sort of sales professional, which was getting extra features and, uh, and, and, and becoming even better. We've, we've hit pause on that until June, July, maybe later. Uh, we don't want to come with a pricing increase into the market now that we were going to do. Uh, we're cutting costs of our starter growth suite for 90 days. So you can buy the starter package of marketing, sales and service for $50 or 46 euros or, or 42 pounds uh, a month. It's an astonishingly uh, generous offer I felt from the leadership and means that everyone can get going doing inbound marketing, inbound sales and inbound service. Here's the details, okay? Uh, it's a website, uh, offers.hubspot.com, customer changes March 2020. And you're gonna see all these details uh, and FAQs there. So go and look at, again, we'll send this out afterwards. You can get the details, um, but we, this is how we are uh, adapting. Um, so there's a pause. I just wanted to say we all have to adapt. Uh, we have to treat people as people, but as professionals, and that's what we're doing. So I just had a moment pause. Uh, we're 15 minutes in, so good timing, just for questions and reflections. And Tice, if there's been any, uh, I see one from Michelle. Yes, I've seen the one from Michelle as well. So what if workload drops due to the coronavirus? How to keep your team enthusiastic and not lose their focus. We're going to come to this in a moment and I don't have necessarily all the answers. And uh, of course not. Uh, we have to accept that there aren't easy answers always. But one of the things is what is the opportunity now? What, you know, I'll talk about it in a moment. The biggest objection, I've worked for HubSpot for six years, seven, coming up, you know, seven years. The, the biggest objection marketeers have for not doing inbound marketing is time. I can't write the content. I, can't, I haven't got, I've got too much else going on. Well, now people have time. And so suddenly content marketing could come to the fore in a way that it couldn't do before in businesses because, it, you know, people didn't have the time. So there's opportunities, creative thinking, what does this extra time allow us to do that we haven't been able to do? What a, you know, even we put on a webinar with webs. We just responded quickly. What can we do right now to support? So brainstorm, what opportunities, like a SWOT analysis that uh, can happen at a team level and a business level. Yeah, and what really helps from a, a web's perspective, like what we do, we adopted the Rockefeller habits and have daily stand-up, daily huddles. Uh, you can even do it online to make sure that everybody is focused, starting the day off um, while everybody is on remote, but still doing those uh, starting points every day to keep focus, share personal stuff, uh, your worries, your plans, etc. Um, to keep everybody aligned and focused. That's what we offer and add to our um, process as well. And that's brilliant. And I think that's that idea of communication needs to go up. Everyone has to have space to be able to talk and, and, and learn and, 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 and share and, and brainstorm. Um, Alice One has a question. question. Yeah. Uh, Alice, yeah, again, uh, you mentioned activities for kids. What exactly are you guys offering? Yeah, so like uh, it's a few times a week. It happens in the middle of our day. There's an online Zoom call where you can dial in and someone will take song requests and there's activities presented and there's suggestions. So if you're homeschooling or if you've got preschool children, they are, um, that we're, they're just some resources for parents who are working from home. Um, also, we have uh, a, 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 our chief customer officer is a, is a mother of, t I think, of two children. And she was sharing very openly in our company meeting to everyone some of the challenges she's having running all the, all the customer stuff at HubSpot, all our sales and marketing, and dealing with kids who are playing saxophone in the background and trying to go on a board meeting. And she has her, her elderly you know, parents. You know, I was just impressed that there was a vulnerability and a just a, hey, we're all, we're, all, we're all feeling this. We're all adapting. There wasn't this, you know, we've got it all sorted. So even just that sense of humanity and sense of togetherness from the leadership at HubSpot, as, as she was telling how she was dealing with it, a mom really impressed me, helped me, 
showed a sense of care rather than just, you know, we need to hit our numbers and, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so that's the other thing I think you can do is make sure from the leadership, you're communicating, hey, this is how I'm doing. This is some of the things that I'm struggling with or, or we're trying to navigate. Um, okay, let me keep going. If there's other questions, they can come in. Um, I just wanted to show you though, some examples uh, that I mentioned. So here's the changes. Uh, so I'll put these in the chat for you there so you can have those. Uh, here was an email that our two co-founders, Brian and Darmesh, sent out to all our customers or a number of them, just talking about what we're doing and how we're helping and, uh, and the different things that link to that website I just sent you. And, and, and the response was just brilliant, you know, in terms of, of, of what that meant to this person and this company. And we've had that repeatedly as we've communicated, here's what we're doing. Our customers have come back and been really grateful. Here is a dashboard that I was talking about, the different types of growth industries through COVID-19 and how we can do it and, and here's why now and, and what we can do to help them. So this is a dashboard that was created for me as a sales rep at this time to go, well, maybe these industries could take advantage of the season or, 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 or have opportunities that will survive through the season. Very clever thinking and then great tools given to me so I can, uh, I can do my, my job. Okay, those are the things I wanted just to share with you there. So, I think it was Winston Churchill who said, never allow a good crisis to go to waste. And I guess that's the theme of this webinar. We've all got to adapt, we've got to show sympathy, but how do we, how do we adapt well? How do we make the most of the current situation? Um, so, in one sense, the famous old expression, necessity is the mother of invention. When we're forced, when we have no choice, when it's wartime mentality, it's not peacetime mentality. We're living in war times in one sense. You've all got to react. There's a, there's a necessity we can invent. We can find creative powers. We can empower our people. Um, and so I think this is huge. I hope you can read this slide. This current crisis could fast forward a digital transformation in your business that should already have happened. Now the C-suite has to figure this out. Now the people who hold the budgets have to be able to release some of that. Now some of the politics has to go second in your business because this is too important to let politics uh, get in the way. So uh, I think that is really, really a key message here. There's a moment for marketeers and salespeople and business leaders and commercial people and customer service people to go, wait a minute, we've been wanting some of this and we haven't been able to have it for any and all good and bad reasons now it's going to get forced through and that's a good thing and you could end up taking advantage so here was a, a lady that wrote a brilliant blog post uh, amanda elam she signed up she moved from um for, she, she changed her marketing stack and came on to hubspot uh this was in march 20th okay so this is when the crisis is really kicking off everyone's having to figure out remote and she wrote this fantastic blog post that again I'll, I'll send you in a moment. And she had four reasons why she moved to HubSpot and made a big, big business decision for a big company. She said the world would be different and we need to be ready for the fast pace of that transformation. That's why we did it. Customers need education and community now more than ever. So that's why she did it. We found a partner dedicated to making us successful and it was our rallying point. I thought that was fantastic. What are we gonna do? When everyone's remote and we've got all this, we're gonna have a new rallying point. We're gonna have something to go after. To the question Michelle asked, what do we do? We'll find a new rallying point. For her, it was adopting a new marketing stack and our, our growth suite. It doesn't have to be that for you, but what is it for you? A great, great example of never allowing a good crisis uh, to go to, to, to waste. So, what about marketing? It's in the chat pane. If you're a marketeer, could you just let me know? Just say me, 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 or something like that. If you're in marketing, uh, let me know. Uh, just be interested to get some answers on the chat pane. So if you're in marketing, how do you adapt? Great, thank you guys. How do you adapt? Well, well first of all, uh, by saying that you can only have inbound leads now. Trade shows, gone. Face-to-face, -face, gone. Any kind of, of that like marketing where you have to go and be in presence and, and, and do fairs and trade shows and events, gone. It's got to be inbound now. It's got to be. Uh, I, I, I'm not trying to push HubSpot's message. I'm just telling you a reality. Um, so what does that mean? Well, I said it before when answering Michelle's great question. That means 
it has to be content-led strategies now. And now marketeers have time to write blogs, to research, to do some, some, some surveys, to, to great, create some great information. Yes, there's adaption and yes, we've got less time immediately, but actually now the dust is settling and certain people in our team haven't got, we've actually got time to write some great content. And you guys in your businesses, if you spend some time uh, pooling your knowledge, pooling your expertise at this moment, you could have, you could have lots of great content uh, that could be found and utilized and helpful for others. Webinars is huge. You can't do trade shows, but you can do webinars. You can't turn up at events, but you can do webinars. You can put on a webinar for five, 10, 20 people, 100 people. And we've got 158 of this, which thank you for coming. Fantastic. Put on webinars and make sure it's helping the customer. It's got that inbound focus. Why not? Adapt. Video. I'm going to show you in a moment in my little demo how to start using video for marketing, for service, and for sales. One-to-one -one videos like the one I did on LinkedIn, if you saw that, like the one the guys at Webs have done. Just use video now. Put them on your landing pages. Put them on your website. Helpful videos that engage. Some of you should have been doing this anyway and you weren't, now's the moment to start doing it. Conversational marketing. Have you got online? Have you got the chat? Have you got the bot working? Should you have already done that? Is now a moment to do it and start doing conversational marketing where your website is much more interactive and much more conversational. Uh, and you should have done that anyway and now's the moment to do it. So, Marketeers, it's inbound leads only. It's content-led strategy. It's webinars, it's videos, it's conversation. You need to have the vision, the people, the technology, and then the process. But here's a moment to execute all those things. What about sales? Again, in the chat pane. Uh, if you could just put in the chat pane your, uh, if you're in sales, just put me, 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 or anything like that, and, uh, and we, can, uh, we can answer. But great, thank you guys. Uh, thanks, Cor and Wesley and Ruan and different people for saying, great, lovely to have you here. Uh, I'm in sales, I know what you're, you're going through, so nice to have you here. So how do we adapt if we're salespeople, or if you're a sales manager or sales VP, uh, or, or the CEO who's running the sales division? Firstly, outbound reps are now inbound reps, and that happened overnight, and that was a, quite a painful change for many people, but that's the reality. So we have to think, what's the difference and you should brainstorm this on a whiteboard. What's the difference between an outbound rep and an inbound rep? What's the crossover and the difference? And what training do they need and all the rest? Inbound sales, therefore. So they need leads. And they need to be working a higher velocity of leads rather than, uh, and they need to be, uh, to know what leads they can follow up on. And are you giving them the leads? And where are you going to get those leads from? Uh, they need to have technologies to support them like Zoom and like maybe HubSpot or other technologies that help them work remotely and do their job. They need video. Video is gonna be huge now for sales reps. Again, I'll show you that in a moment, how to use that. And it's just a brilliant tool for you to use. They're gonna need sequences. This idea of being able to follow up leads in an automated way via email and tasks and phone and LinkedIn. And again, I'll show you that. Uh, they're going to need meeting links because they're going to have to have lots of meetings booked. Uh, probably the, the velocity is going to have to increase if they're going to change the way they, the way they work. And so they need people to be able to book them easily and change, take away that admin of having to do lots of backward and forward arranging meetings. They're going to need to have quotes and e-signs so people can get on and still sign contracts and the company can still make money even though you can't be there uh, in person. And you're going to need all the usual things salespeople need, a simple way to manage pipeline, organize your tasks, set up queues to work your leads, have lead lists, all those kind of good things that many CRMs, of course, offer. Um, so I wonder, have you guys got that organized? Have you got the tools your team need? Are you, in, are you equipping them to be inbound sales reps? Have you thought what that means? Uh, here is a brilliant summary. Many companies are having to go now from being like, well, we were field sales, um, we, we maybe had moved to high touch B2B, so there was lots of engagement. It was a long sales process. It was quite high touch. Uh, everyone's now having to move to, towards the low touch and the no touch. Like, how do we do sales online? How do we do sales in, 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 in a different way? Um, and if you're field sales, you, you're having to go to a different type of selling process. 
and you need to figure this out. Webs are here to help you. We're here to help you. Like, what does that mean? And, and what does that mean for training? What does that mean for technologies? What does that mean for, for processes? Um, and, uh, and all the rest. I see some questions. We'll come to those now. Uh, we'll come to those in a minute. Sorry. So services, if you're in customer services, we've done marketing, we've done sales. What about customer service? Put your note in the chat pane. If you're in customer service, lovely to have our customer service people here. They are busy people right now. We need to thank these people. These people are having so many questions fired at them. So it doesn't look like anyone on this call is in customer service. Hey, Alex. Thank you, Alex. We love Alex. He's solving every customer service problem out there. Uh, so uh, give, give, give lots of kudos to Alex. Anyway, if you're not in customer service, how does your business think about customer service? Uh, our customers have questions and feedback. Like, what are we doing? How are we coping? What are the, op what are the options here? How are we going to deal with this contract? I need to cancel. I need to, I need to change this. I need to think about slimming down. I need help solving this problem. Whatever it is, there's questions, questions, questions. So if you're in customer service, you've got to now be 24 seven. Uh, it doesn't mean you literally have to be 24 seven as a person, but your business has to have customer service 24 seven. People are online all the time. Uh, you have to therefore be multi-channel. Is there, is there a way for people to contact you via email, via phone, via a form, via chat, uh, and all the rest? Uh, you therefore need chat and a bot. So chat to be managed and chat for a bot to, 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 to help uh, answer people's questions. And with that bot, therefore, you need a knowledge base. So the bot can serve up knowledge base articles or people can search themselves to self-service and take some of the pressure off your service team because the customers are able to self-service and we'll have a much better customer experience because of that. Uh, and therefore they need the processes and the tools to handle and deliver success there. So these are strange and unprecedented times. Companies must go online. Companies must grow uh, remotely and go remotely. Companies must have the leadership, the people, the processes and the technology to support this. Just to repeat, this could be an opportunity to force an adaption that should already have happened in your business, in your technologies, in your people, in your processes. And so have a think about that. Um, so here's another little moment. We are again, perfectly on time, half past, for questions and reflections. I see quite a few, so I'll let Tice let yeah, me Yeah, I took some notes, Steve. There is one topic which is really, um, uh, on the agenda for now regarding the chat pane um, because there is a <clears throat> more increasing uh, amount of outreaches so lots more emails coming out from businesses there is a concern that a lot of people uh, start uh, opting out some businesses are seeing an increase of people opting out on those emails um, and Marieke already respond to it quite smart in my opinion to say the relevance of your content determines exa exactly the context. So if that's high enough, people won't opt out. Is there anything else to add to this or is that just a simple uh, and straightforward explanation? I think that's a great answer. I mean, don't over communicate. You know, I talked about making sure you're communicating, but there's a kind of, uh, there's just an over communication, but there's also, as you said, a non-valuable communication. What is the value here that I'm forgiving? What's the relevance? Uh, was I think the answer. I think that's brilliant. So yeah, your content has to be valuable um, and and relevant and 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 not o overload. Um, so yeah. And what about differences between industries? Because uh, industries are more busy at these days. Uh, food or pharma, I say, is is named here. Um, they are super busy and they don't like the overkill of emails right now. So the message, but also the frequency maybe determines some uh, success. And the industry, like we have, a, we've been given lists of like, these are the industries that are probably struggling with these things. So this is how you should communicate. We've been given that thought leadership. So someone needs to do that thought leadership in the business. Like how is the pharma sector responding? How is the food sector responding? How is, and so therefore, you know, well, this is how we're going to help. It's, it's all about personas, right? If you've ever done anything with inbound, what, who is your customer? What are they like? What is their daily job like? What are their pains and their goals? And therefore, how can you as a company help them? Again, here's a moment for this to force an adaption. Have I understood my customer? Have I understood my persona? 
and therefore am I helping them or am I just giving everyone the same blanket message that's kind of meaningless? And so understanding your persona, that's a great exercise. Take a day. Someone asks the question, what do I do with my team? Well, let's go and hone our persona so we can get the right content in this season. That's a great example. Any more questions, Tyce, you want me to take up? Um, uh, any ideas? No, no, I think it's good that um, what you're saying is the tool can support those outreaches, but start thinking and researching that carefully. Identify your persona, your, the needs of your persona, to make sure that the context is relevant enough and then uh, uh, um, outreach your content, of course, outreach to your to your future customers. So I think yeah. that's a great opportunity. Um, I think um, we're good now for the questions. Maybe there will come some later on, but please continue for now. Yeah, and if we can't get to your question, uh, you're gonna have my meeting link and Tice's meeting link in after this uh, call, uh, so you can book some time or drop us an email. Um, but uh, ho hopefully some helpful thoughts here coming in the chat. So I want to move to, well, how, how do you do this? Maybe this is going to help with the question. And I want to talk about a digital sales process that starts with marketing. So if, 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 you're, if you're already doing this, forgive me, give me two minutes. If you're not doing this, this is what you need to do. Here we have high value pieces of content called pillar pages, pillar content. This is very specific and very high value and well-organized piece of content as, as someone said in the chat pane, that is all about your helping your persona, helping your customer. It's not about you. It's not about your product. It's not about your service. It's not about how great you are. It's, how, it's about them, their goals, their pains, their challenges, and what you can do uh, to help them. So it's a high value piece of content. This webinar is a high value piece of content. We've taken a lot of work to get together. We've got a lot of people on it because there's something here that we're helping with. What is your equivalent of that pillar page, that come and engage, we've got something to help you. Off the pillar page, then you have lots of cluster content, blogs and paid social and paid ads and different things that are, are, are pushing out that, that, that high value piece of content, that, that, that place where you want to be a thought leader and bringing people back in to convert on it. Um, and so, so that's called the pillar and the cluster model around content strategy. Um, so you're really working hard on that main offer and then you're thinking about how to distribute it and and pull people in and this is how google wants to you know you should be thinking uh to, to, to this is how google operates who are the thought leaders and we want to have not just so much keyword searching but more topic who are, who are the authorities on topics now when you get something like this there'll be a very small percentage that will convert on your piece of content and say i'm ready to buy or i want to talk to sales at least like tice let me talk about how we buy hubspot now that kind of thing two to five percent not very many so you're pulling all these people in with great content but two to five percent of those will want to say i want to speak to sales and when they do you need to have the sales process and the tools and all the rest to, to hopefully bring some food to customers so what are you doing to the 95 to 98 percent of people that are landing on your best content but are not buying well you have a way of nurturing you can nurture through marketing automation emails that are then warming them up. You can nurture them through sales one-to-one -one automation emails. You can actually nurture them if, you, if you're in the, in the SaaS game with a free adoption tool. That's a nurture tool. Hey, come and just start for free. So you need to be thinking, how do we get people self-adopting? How do we get people self going on that journey of self-discovery at their pace? What content do they need? What outreach do they need? What tools do they need that they can just access at their time in their way not with our pushy salespeople pushing them because this is inbound now. The ones that want to speak to us, we're ready to speak to you. The ones that are not ready, how do we help them? What is this content strategy? What are we doing at the different levels of the buyer journey to give them the right content or the right um, freemium option to engage for free? So that's, uh, that's, um, that's, that's the kind of process we're trying to put in place, a digital sales process. Now we're going to go to the live demo. Now, as with any live demo, we need to, uh, you need to be merciful to me that it may go wrong with, with broadband and all those things. I'm putting myself in a vulnerable position with 150 people looking at my demo. But I think we, uh, we, can, all, we, can, all, uh, we can all cope with that. If you've seen HubSpot, some of this is familiar. If you haven't, then hopefully uh, different bits will help you. 
So this is my friend Brian at HubSpot. This is a demo portal that we have. And uh, this, uh, this is his contact record. And so down the left-hand side, I can see everything about him that's important. Uh, his contact card, uh, his name, his owner, his conversion date, his, his life cycle stage, his lead score, uh, when he was created, a custom property. We're not allowed to attend trade shows now, but maybe he attended a trade show. Uh, whatever custom properties that are useful for your business, you can add in uh, where he's based and located. Uh, we can see his website activity. Uh, how many page views, his most recent visit, and his first visit. This is very customizable to you. Down the middle then, we get to see a complete contact record of everything he's doing online. And we can monitor it and track it. What are the, who, how he's engaging with our sales and, and, and customer service teams. What calls and conversations and emails and meetings and notes and tasks and what's going on there. We can see everything he's doing with our marketing, our, our, our emails, our website, our, our social media, the forms he's filling in. We, we can see what kind of automation we've got going in the background to think through how to help him on his customer journey. And then we've got all the different uh, data that's been pulled in from different integrations we have to, to supplement and to help. So I can go in here and I could search quite simply and say, right, I just want to see what forms he's submitting and ads he's, he's engaged with and any calls that he's had with our sales team. And I can go in there now and just see those things um, or whatever you like. This is just the ability to be able to engage uh, and get visibility on your customers and your prospects. Now down the right hand side here, I can see his company and I can go in there and, and have a look at his company and, and get the similar, similar kind of view and, and data that I have on his contact. I can see what deals are associated with him, what tickets are associated, so marketing and, and, and service and sales are all joined up. Uh, and I can see this playbook. I want to show you this playbook tool. I think this is one of the greatest tools. If you're trying to help Outbound sales reps become inbound sales reps. Playbooks is a game changer. So I'm, or, or you're adopting new reps, so you're hiring a new rep. I, I've got to speak to Brian. I'm a new rep at HubSpot. What do I do? I click on my discovery call playbook. It logs it for me. It tells me exactly what I have to do. And it tells me like I need to do an introduction. I need to understand the company priorities. I need to get the sales and marketing process and technology. And then I need to do some qualification. And I can even just go in here and click the answers and then take extra notes for my demo, you know, just as an example. Uh, and I can, I can go in here and click on that and, and add extra things, uh, surviving um, uh, COVID, you know, that kind of thing. I can't spell COVID-19 on a demo, you'll excuse me. Then I logged that call, and what you'll see here is that's now gonna pop up on his, uh, on his timeline. Uh, and, uh, and there it is, okay? It pops up, so that call that I just made, that I was guided through with my playbooks, is now popping up on here uh, really, really helpfully. Uh, I can also see him in LinkedIn Sales Navigator. We can pull that through, and I can go and connect with him and message him. Again, if you're an outbound sales rep, Having to do inbound sales, having a clear playbook you follow, having the ability to connect and, and message on LinkedIn is going to be a huge advantage, uh, and, and that'll help you there. Uh, and there's various other things I can, I can do with him. So that's the contact record, the LinkedIn sales navigator, and the playbooks. I can then go in here and take some notes uh, and log any notes if I want, and I can be a bit clever. I can go and mention him in his note and say, hey, uh, just just showing you to 150 people um, and that kind of thing. I can create a follow-up task there. I can send him an email. This is really important. I can send him a nice simple email here. I can use templates and documents and, uh, and sequences and documents and meeting link. I can insert meeting links. I can add quotes. So in the templates, it means I get to not have to write the same emails again and again. In sequences, I get to do one-to-one -one automation personalized in documents i get to see who's clicking on the various documents that i've attached and like proposals that kind of thing in meetings i get to add different meeting links that he can book me and obviously i can send him different quotes i want to show you though how that can all work with gmail or office 365 or whatever you're working with so here i have tice i've got templates i've got sequences i've got documents meetings and snippets i can log this i can track this uh, and every time he responds it'll get logged if I show my sequences, this is the number one sales tool that I use that I find so helpful. Say Tice requests a demo, I click on my demo. He's now gonna get a series of emails sent to him 
very simple, very helpful, as was being commented already, that are just going to give him hopefully a chance to book me for the demo that he's requested. This digital sales process that we're taking people through. If he doesn't reply a day later, he gets some demo videos. Uh, if he doesn't reply a day later, I get a note to go and find him on LinkedIn. A task. A day later, I get a call to I, I get a task to call him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can create the rules as you want and as many steps as you like. But it means that high quality leads are being followed up in a one-to-one -one personalized way. I can go in here and make some changes. Uh, and do what I like. I can change the, I can change some of the rules around this uh, to make sure it is personalized. Uh, and I can also do this in bulk. I can, I can bulk enroll a number of people. Super, super helpful tool. Uh, and as I said, I can insert my meeting links. And if I need to bring my technical colleague, Jana on the call, uh, we can have a joint meeting link where whether you're in, out, you know, you're in Microsoft or Gmail or, or Google or whatever, you can pull in from the calendars uh, there. Uh, super helpful. I also see here a summary of who he is or a summary of the company that he's working for. Um, so it, 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 it's, it's uh, not pulling through right now. But if I if I have it here, then it, then he will um, then he'll he'll pop up here. Um, so then I can see a summary of who he is in my in my in my sidebar, uh, and and I can find out who he is and uh, and and who owns him and what, what the situation is and where he's based. I can find out about webs as a company. I can see what deals. I can see what tasks are associated. I can create a task here, uh, give Tice a call. I can create that task. Um, I can go and see his timeline, everything that I was seeing before, uh, what is happening on his timeline. So, uh, so that can be really helpful in any uh, tickets there. Um, so that, that's, a, that's just a really simple way. Now, what I want to show you, if you, uh, if, if, Playbooks, huge. Sequences, huge. Meeting links, huge. LinkedIn Sales Navigator, huge, huge benefits and, and accelerated tools for your sales team right now who are all inbound. But video, let me talk about video. <clears throat> I can go in here and I can start recording a video. Um, I can see who's responding to the video, how many people have viewed my videos. <clears throat> but I can go in here and do it just a tab or a cam or a screen. I can hit record on this. Uh, I can choose what screen to record, and I can start recording. It's going to record in, 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 uh, in three seconds. It starts recording now. So, hey, everyone, we're now doing a video within a video. That's a mental, trippy, philosophical nightmare. A video within a video. Uh, okay. Uh, this video has been recorded. I hope you like it. I hope this webinar is helpful for you. And then I can go in here, and I can stop that video. And so I'm going to create uh, a nice little thumbnail that I can put in to that email with Tice that's gonna show him this video. Uh, and I can go in there and get it all ready and, and you know, again, put up some nice little touches to that. Um, so I can uh, go and change the title, uh, that kind of thing. I can click here and share it. Uh, copy link and thumbnail. Um, this is what I did if you saw it on my LinkedIn page. And then I can put it in here and there it is. Now I'll customize that email, but he goes in and he clicks out and the video starts playing of whatever I wanted to show him. And I send that uh, and it'll log and I can do send times. You'll even see that I can do the video here. I can go and record a video straight away out of the email or, or find an old one if I've got lots of different uh, videos there already. So for people again, what do I do in my sales team, my marketing team, start creating value added email uh, videos one or two minutes long that people could send out in their, in their sales emails. Okay. Uh, let me think what else we could do to help salespeople uh, get going. Uh, so we, we've got the contact record. Uh, we're also going to look at our tasks uh, and our deals. Um, so in our, in our tasks, um, we're, we're going to be able to organize ourselves around the different uh, responsibilities we have. Um, uh, you know, as, as, these, as these sequences are happening, as I'm creating tasks like I just did for Tice there, I can then have different tasks, open tasks, due today, due this week, overdue. I can just see the various types of tasks, the emails, the calls, the to-dos, the completed. I can create different queues. So when I create a queue, what it does is it, I, I organize a list of tasks that I need to do today, or you could do this as a manager for your reps. And then on here, uh, I then can start this queue and what it will do is I'll put all these tasks in an order. So for two hours, 
I can just focus on bash, 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 getting through my different tasks. I can call them, I can email them, I can drop them the LinkedIn note, whatever the task is. You should note here as well, you can call through HubSpot. There's the li that, that some of the limits we're taking off uh, and then those calls will be recorded. So I can reschedule this task, I can skip this task, I can complete it and I can move on to the next one. Let's say I complete that, it'll then move on to my next task and off I go with my next person or next company or whatever I had to do. Super, super valuable organizing tool to, to speed you up in what you're doing. So what about deals? We're following up our leads. We're doing all that great outreach through our video, through our sequences. We're using playbooks to make sure our calls are, are really good. We're organizing ourselves with tasks. Now we've got our pipelines. And here in our pipelines, you can see the various uh, stages that you put in place that fit your business. Uh, and you can see these different, uh, these different um, uh, uh, deals that I've created. Uh, now, if I move a deal over, this is one I created for here, uh, it would just move from stage to stage. Uh, and what will happen at some point is I'll have required fields. So I'll have to just put in, oh, this is important for my business team. I can just put that in. And so I get data cleanliness. I get data input. What's the biggest problem that VPs of sales have with their sales reps? They don't use the CRM and input the data. Well, I'm being, I'm being guided through how to input the data. Uh, when I go into this, this deal record, I can then go in and see, um, and see what's happening with it and what I've got to do with it. And again, it'll look very similar to the contact record, very similar to the company record. Um, I can look at the playbooks again. I can add my products that I want to add to sell to this, this, uh, this, uh, this, this, this person. And I can create quotes. Um, so if I go in here uh, and, and create the quote, I can go in here and click on here and it'll take me through. I can use my template, what kind of quote am I giving, the name, the expiration date, comments to the buyer, size, sign this, please, purchase terms as agreed, uh, and, and off we go. We, we can add those little notes in, they'll all be put on. I then click next, uh, who, who, you know, the buyer information, I then click next, like who are, me, who are we, uh, I then click next, and I can add the products, I can go to my library or add products, I can change the quantity, and the, uh, is it a recurring? Is it a one-off product? Am I going to add a discount, add a fee, any tax? I can do all that here. Uh, and then I'm going to do e-signature because we're working remote and I'm going to say these people have to do it. And just for the sake of this demo, I need to put my, uh, myself as a counter signer uh, for it to work. Uh, and I'm going to do it with Stripe. Okay, and then I click next and it's going to take me here to, the, to what the quote would look like, which you can customize. I can check out or sign. Uh, and if I click on sign, uh, it'll take me, um, my, my computer's starting to crash. It will give me something like this to, to copy. And when I go in here, uh, it will, uh, it will um, give me this option. So I should hopefully, if the thing doesn't work, verification set. Okay, so I've set my verification. I come back in here. I verify the quote and I'll be able to go in and sign this quote now. Okay, so I sign quotes uh, and I can sign this uh, online uh, nice and easily for you. But okay, there's, it's expired uh, as part of the demo, but then I would just go in uh, and sign it. Um, anyway, I just wanted to give you, there's more tools and there's reports and, and nice reports for you I wanted to, to show you, but we've run out of time, but that's fine. Just some of the things that we can do to help you and the tools that we've got uh, that I think can help you there. Um, a lot of that now is in our free tools. And so you can get on and start doing that today. Uh, and our, our vision as a business is to help you put the customer in the middle. And whether you're working in marketing, sales or service, you create a flywheel that means you get more customers and happy customers. So questions and reflection. I think I'm done apart from some questions and handing back to Tyson in a moment. So I think there's been some questions. So do you want to bring the ones out, Ty, so that may be relevant? Yeah, we have some questions. Uh, Steve, thank you for this um, uh, insights on using HubSpot. Um, one a question on the videoing. Is that a connection between Vidyard? So you, do you make the video with Vidyard and then embed it in a HubSpot email? Or is that directly into HubSpot Lake? Yeah, we, we white label it. So it's a, it's a connection that's made. If you buy HubSpot sales, you get it automatically. It is Vidyard and then um, off you go. 
So that's so with how it Vidyard, works. you make the uh, video and then it's automatically pushed into your. Well, you make it like I did in HubSpot, but we've white labeled it. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and what type of license do you need to get all this? This is all a uh, sales hub. Yeah, it's all sales hub, what I've shown you today, though some of it also goes into service hub because the, free, the CRM and HubSpot is free and some of those uh, conversational tools like email and sequences and templates can be in, in service or sales. But if you want things like the LinkedIn sales navigator and the sequences, uh, they would be in professional. Normally, video quotes and e-sign are in professional too, but at this stage, they're in free. Uh, because of the current season that we're in so and playbooks is enterprise uh, There's a load of other tools you can get and I can I can I can show you uh, This nice summary of what you get in each and I'll make sure this gets sent around afterwards What's a portal feature a seed feature for starter for professional? You can start to see the different things that are that I've been showing you here uh, Sequences and video but some of these right now are in free uh, for you for you now playbooks is over here uh, different things if you want, the call transcription, single sign-on, um, predictive lead score, uh, different things that you can have here, multi-currency, things like that. Okay, we have a couple more minutes and I got some more questions. There was one concerning on uh, GDPR in Germany because you've shown uh, a lot of tracking possibilities. Uh, how is this still compliant within uh, uh, GDPR-related laws and regulations? especially in Germany. Do you, can you tell us something about that? Yeah, I mean, our German, we have an office in Germany and uh, we've got some great, uh, great team over there now uh, in Berlin. And uh, so, yeah, we have uh, hundreds and thousands of customers that are DAC customers. And we obviously appreciate uh, the, these questions around GDPR and, and, and privacy and data security. And so we have well-documented material that will take you through this on our website. And that, again, we can send that on afterwards. We are GDPR compliant ourselves, but you have to put the process in place for your business. We do give you some, opti some GDPR tools that you can then manage your GDPR in HubSpot. And you can go and organize those settings with our GDPR tools that are in your HubSpot portal. Uh, but the data is obviously all handled based on opt-in and according to the rules uh, of GDPR. And you can have double opt-in if you want to and those kind of, of things if that's important. So whatever the process that you put in place for your business, HubSpot should be able to support. Um, and and uh, yeah, and we, we're coming up to, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's 70 plus thousand customers now worldwide. So we've, 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 we've figured out how to ha enable everyone to follow the various privacy rules that there are. So uh, there's lots of data on our website around GDPR uh, and I can send those afterwards, no, no problem. Okay, we can't cover all the questions. So again, if you have your questions uh, unanswered, you can book, um, time with Steve or with myself directly. So it, for example, Yip, your general question is something we could cover in a one-to-one -one call. So I would advise to use that. You will get an email about that. Um, one more question then to, to finish up this webinar, Steve. Um, there is a question asked, um, you show a lot of amazing tools which can support you being uh, uh, doing sales on remote, but how different, if you need to name some of the biggest, biggest advantages, how different is HubSpot from a normal CRM marketing environment? There's one word. Oh, it's not one, one phrase, easy to use. So like it should be as robust and give you all the various tools that, that you know, the other CRM vendors do. But as you've hopefully seen there, it is super, super easy to use. You're, you're, it helps the reps. It doesn't get in the way of reps. So like a lot of CRMs have to be used by sales reps. I've used different CRMs at different points. But now this is a CRM that I want to use. It helps me use. It helps me with my daily job. It doesn't get in the way of my daily job. It syncs so nicely with Gmail. So ease of use is the thing that uh, I think we continue here and I personally uh, experience. Right. Um, thank you for that. Um, to finish up, ask yourself, guys, uh, your online presence needs to be is more important than ever these days. So how do you perform online? What are the gaps and how to close them? Uh, sales reps became inside sales reps overnight, as Steve explained. So how are they enabled? Can they do their work on remote? And what again, ask yourself, what are the gaps and how to close it? Um, uh, another thing is a lot of customers will answer uh, need uh, for answers uh, these days 
They have a lot of questions while you are not in the office. So how do you present all those answers online? Uh, think of that if you need to know how to close all those gaps. Again, reach out to one of us after this webinar. I want to finish up and use the last seconds, Steve, to shout out to you. Big thank you for your time and your story here. Also, a big thank you to my colleague, Anna, to putting all this together. And um, I would like to invite everybody here to our next webinar with Vainu next week. We're talking again about how to work on remote, on closing your deals and keep continuing filling your pipeline. By saying that, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Feel free to uh, uh, join us next week at uh, Web's Webinar Wednesdays. Take care, be fit, and talk to you later.